Have you checked out this brand new Excel function and will it make you ditch pivot tables? Let's take a look and let me know in the comments if you prefer this over the pivot tables or not. Say your boss wants to know the sum of the total sales by city and sales rep. Well, the usual way to do this would be to create a pivot table. That's old school. But let's look at how we can do this by using the new group by function to do the same. In a blank cell, type equals group by and then open the parenthesis. This function has seven arguments which can be used, but only three of them are required and the other four are optional as they're in square brackets. For the row fields, simply select the columns you want to aggregate up. For example, if you want the total by city, just select the city column. And if you wanted it by city and sales rep, you can select both. Press comma to move on to the values argument. This is just the values column you want to perform the action on. In this case, that's the sales value column. The last required argument is the function. The options in here are similar to those that you find in the subtotal or aggregate functions. For this example, we will use the sum function. Close out the parenthesis and press enter. And there you go, check it out. As quick as that, we've got the same as we'd get with a pivot table. And one thing which is really neat is that because this is a function, it's fully dynamic. Say Foam Simpson had a really crazy sales day, it automatically updates. But with a pivot table, you need to refresh it each time your data changes. Now, let's take a look at a couple of the optional arguments. The first one is the field headers, which there are a number of options. I'll select three for yes and show. This has currently made the first line in the data the headers, because we first need to make sure that for the row fields and the values, we include the headers in the selection, which you can do by clicking on the columns twice. The next one is the total depth, which is all around adding totals and subtotals. A two in this argument will produce a subtotal for each city and a grand total at the bottom. The last optional argument we'll take a look at is the sort order. The values for this function appear in the third column and we need to enter three in for this argument. A positive three will sort by smallest to largest, and a negative three will sort by largest to smallest. There you have it. I'm still not sure that it will make me ditch my pivot tables just yet, but let me know what you think.